Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this week I'm going to discuss with you constraint and unconstrained optimization using the bordered Hessian and the Hessian. I am Daniel Kabnai Trefour and I'm the uh, instructor for this course, Applied Mathematics for Economies. Now, I'm going to, in this section, what we're going to learn is to be able to distinguish between concave and convex functions, uh, understand what the Hessian determinants is, and uh, also try to understand how this Hessian determinant is used to solve uh, constraint optimization. And uh, we also look at situations where we have unconstrained op optimization, where the Lagrangian multiplier would be used. So in a jigs, uh, the outline is that we we'll look at concave functions, unconstrained uh, optimization using the Hessian, and then constrained optimization using the bordered Hessian. The textbooks are the same. Please go through them. All the topics are quite there. Now, uh, what are concave and convex functions? Uh, I'll first look at it when you have a simple uh, single variable function, which you have been dealing you know, to date. Let's say y equals f of x, right? And uh, if you have this function or for a, simple, a single variable function, uh, f of x, it is concave or convex at a point x if in some region very close to that uh, you know very close to that point the graph the graph of that function lies completely below or into bracket above in the case of uh, convex uh, the tangent so what you see over here is that you can see in this case the tangent is above and the the, the graph it's increasing here here, the tangent is again above, and then the graph is over here. What you see is that in this situation, the graph is an increasing function. Here is a, dec a decreasing function. But then, in all both situations, you can see that the tangent is above, you know, the, the function itself. So we look at this one as a concave uh, sort of function. Uh, the reverse is the case. In the case of a convex function, what may happen is that we will have the tangent uh, below, right? What we see here, right? You see there's a convex function. The tangent is below. There's an increasing function. That's why we have the first order differential equal greater than zero. This is decreasing function. And then, uh, you know, the graph or the tangents is above the graphs. What we are discussing here is for a single value function. But then, uh, we've been advancing, isn't it? We're looking at a, a, function, a function with two or more variables, right? If you take a function of this nature, I'm going to give you very specific examples. If you take a function of this nature, we are supposed to you know, investigate the concavity, convexity at a point. We differentiate it, slot in the form point over here, and then the result is what you can see over here. Please look at this activity and try to understand what concave and convex functions are. Now, uh, notice that we've been talking about, you know, functions of multivariable functions. And if you want to investigate the concavity or convexity of multivariable functions, then we have to move a little further. And here, we use what we call the Hessian determinant, okay? The Hessian determinant. Now, what this determinant is that we just have to take the differentials of the function with respect to the first variable, the second order differentials, and then we have with respect to the second variable. Here is what we have, the cross partials. We put it in this determinant, and then we evaluate this determinant at the point where, where we are supposed to investigate the concavity or the convexity of that function. And these are the situations under which we will have a concave function or a convex uh, function. I provide an example here. So this is our function. We take the first order, second order differentials. We find our Hessian determinant. And then over here, we evaluate at a point, And we see that we have a convex you know, function. Please take your time and look at this example and then be able to get you know, the tools on how to deal with concave and convex functions using the Hessian uh, determinant. Now, recall that you discuss unconstrained optimization, you know, using the Hessian. 
uh, at level 200, uh, you talked about maximizing profit, maximizing production, minimizing cost. These are all uh, unconstrained sort of optimization. And if you do recall, uh, there are three conditions for you to investigate the maximum or the minimum of a point, right? Now, the first order condition is that, you know, the differentials, the first order differentials should be equal to zero. The second order, when you have these conditions being, you know, satisfied, then you have more or less a relative maxima or a little minima in the situation when you have these uh, conditions being applied. There is some other conditions which are, you know, also uh, investigated like point of inflection, saddle points. For economists, you know, saddle point, point of inflection, they are not very sort of uh, interesting to us. Our main sort of uh, discussion will focus on maximum and then minimum. Now, what we have, or the problem we have with this is that uh, this is quite sufficient for us to discuss functions of two variables. So in a production function, when you have only two inputs, that is fine. But the question is that when you have more than two inputs, how do you go about it? And this is the value addition that we are going to make uh, uh, this section. Now, to be able to do that, we have to first specify the Hessian determinant, right? And uh, uh, formally, the determinant, the Hessian determinant is a special determinant informed by arranging the second order partial derivatives in such a way that the second order direct pass partial derivatives are at the principal diagonal. So this is the second order partials. For a simple case, you know they are at the diagonals as you can see over here. And then we have the cross second order partial derivatives at the other sides, okay? So for a simple function with two uh, sort of uh, inputs, or two variables, we have the Hessian as defined here. And uh, if we go back and look at this uh, formula which we discussed over here, we can then have these uh, conditions defined using the Hessian, as you can see here. The first order, there is no change. The second order, we have just expressed them nicely using the, the Hessian determinant, determinant. So you have to evaluate this matrix, the determinant, if it's less than zero, and then what you have, the alternating sign, then you're talking about, you know, negatively defined and therefore a maximum is attained. When they are all greater than zero, it means it is possibly de defined and we are talking about relative uh, minima. I have a simple example here. This example, you can go through yourself, you've done it. Just that here, you would be using the Hessian determinant. So I take my cross partials, I form my determinant, I try to evaluate at the other point and then I determine whether it's a maximum or minimum. Notice that once we know the maximum or minimum point, we can find the maximum itself just by inserting the two points into the equation, and then we arrive at the solution. Where is the value addition? Assuming you have a, a function, a production function, that has got n sort of variables. Here, it means you have to find your Hessian determinant in this way. So you see the diagonal you have the second order derivatives uh, uh, over here and outside the, uh, the diagonals, uh, uh, the diagonal, you have the second order cross partials in relative to all the other uh, variables. So you have what we stand over here being the second order cross partials, what is stand over here being the second order cro pro sorry, cross partials, and then you have this condition. Now, once you have the second order, you have the, so I can call this one an n-dimensional sort of Hessian because we have n sort of what? Inputs. Now, out of this, uh, you know, n-dimensional uh, uh, determinant or Hessian determinant, I can form what we call the principal minus. So if I take this one, this becomes the first principal minor, all right? And then if I take this one, assuming A3 or F, you know, 1, 3 were to be here, and I take this one, I get the second principal minus, and then it, it goes on, it goes on until I have the last, I mean, the, the, the Hessian itself. What I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to define the conditions for a maximum or the conditions for a minimum when you have a function with more than two variables. So these are the conditions. The second order conditions remain, the first order condition remains unchanged. The only thing is that the equality to zero should be with respect to all the variables. And then we have the situation for the second order sort of condition and the situation over here for the second order condition. 
notice that the matrices that you have here, they are the principal diagonals, okay? The principal diagonals, and here starting from one, the principal diagonals, which I defined over here. So this is the principal diagonal for three, for two, and then it goes on and it goes on. So you have to evaluate the principal diagonals at the maximum or the minimum points, and you see if the value is greater than zero, they alternate in sign, or if they are all, what, greater than zero, to know whether they are possibly defined. And then you, you determine if it's uh, uh, a maximum or minimum. So the simple value addition with the Hessian is that it permits you to find the maximum or the minimum of any function with any number of variables. Unlike a situation where you use the simple formula that you use as level 200. Now, this is an example. So I take, as usual, I take my first order derivatives, okay? I equate it to zero. And what happens is that, you know, we have to find for the critical point. So I'll just, I'll have this uh, three equations, three unknowns, linearly independent. The, the solution is unique. I solve for the solution. And here we have these uh, 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 solutions. The next point is that, so the solutions are what we have over here, right? X, three, X, two, and then the other one. Now, we find the second order derivatives, okay? So when you take the second order derivatives, we get this equation. So we have formed our Hessian, okay? And this is our H1, our H2, and this is our H3. The next point is to see the values of these H1, H2, and H3. And then you can see that in this situation, they have positive signs. So the Hessian here is said to be what? you know, a relative maximum, uh, minimum if you compare it to the situation that we have over here, right? So we have a situation where we have a minimum. And therefore, it means that this our point here is an actual, you know, sort of minimum looking at the first order and the second order conditions. As usual, we can plug these values and find the actual value as we've seen, seen over here and the actual value gives us this. So what it means is that uh, it is only at this point that we will get the minimum value. If we change any of these value, values of x, y, x1, x2, x3, we will get a value that is, uh, you know, higher than what we have over here. There are some activities over here, of course, involving three variables. I would like you to take your time and go through them. Now, recall that uh, we also solve situations where you are constrained, okay? In economics, we can have a situation where you are maximizing a production function subject to a cost constraint, minimizing a production function subject to a you know, production quota. And here we use uh, the Lagrangian. Earlier, if you know, so we have our Lagrangian, we form our Lagrangian. What do you know? We take the first order uh, derivatives. And then, you know, we form, in this situation, we form what we call the bordered Hessian. Okay? And the bordered Hessian in our simple case, is what we have over here. Notice that in the case of a body Hessian, it is conventional to put a bar here, saying that this matrix that you see over there is a bordered, you know, sort of uh, 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 Hessian matrix. And you can see what happens is that if you take your full objective function, we take the second order derivatives, and then you put them here. This is the cross partials. And then the constraint function, we take the derivative with respect to x and with y, we put it over here, and then we have 0 over here. So this is how you form your bordered Hessian determinant in a situation where you have only two inputs. And in certain cases, you can also form it this way. And I can hypothesize that the determinant you get here and the determinant you get here, they are the same. But I really prefer forming my bordered Hessian in this, you know, way. Now, uh, recall that, again, for a simple 2 by 2 sort of function, this is the condition for a relative maximum and a relative, what, minimum. And in the same way, let's take an example and see how this uh, uh, will work out. In this small example, I have my function, I have my constraint function, all right? We are supposed to find the maximum and then estimate the maximum at the, at the, at the values. So what happened is that, as usual, we form our Lagrangian function. We take our first order derivative. We find the value of x, y, and the Lagrangian. 
using you know any method of uh, solving simultaneous equation and uh, what happens is that if we go through we go through we have found our y to be equals to that 30 our x here to be equal to 40 and then there's our lagrangian which we can always do so the next point is that we need to find our bordered hessian determinant so this is the second order you know partial derivative these are the cross derivatives and we obtain this by differentiating the functions that we have here with respect to again here uh differencing the lagrangian with respect to x with respect to y and uh, we get the values that we have over here now the constraint function with respect to x is what and with respect to y give us this and then we put the same values here and then we have our bordered hessian you know determinant so trying to now evaluate our bordered hessian determinant uh, we get this value and therefore when we try to put in these values we have this uh, equation there is one thing that i think i have to tell you notice that in a situation where we have a function with two variables okay the bordered hessian becomes a determinant a three-dimensional determinant even though we have given this one h2 right it's the convention is that the, the the value you put here depends on the number of variables that you have variables of interest and not on the number of variables that you are using in the equation in this equation the third variable is your lambda right but the real variables that we are interested in is x and y all right so we use h2 here so if you see any h uh, uh, a variable h with a bar 3 it means this matrix is going to be a 4 by 4 what matrix is going to be a 4 by 4 matrix uh, now once we have this value over here you know the value of x and y you can plot it inside and then we'll be able to know the actual you know maximum or minimum here in this case we have a maximum right uh, with the constraints that we have so we form we form our you know bordered hessian you know determinant here and uh, which we evaluate to be what we have over here now we have these uh, two critical points which uh, we know is a maximum from the second order sort of uh, uh, conditions we slot the values over here and we are able to calculate we are able to calculate the maximum uh, point now where is the value addition now uh, with the help of the bordered hessian determinant you are able to find the mix, uh, minimum or the maximum of any constraint optimization that is uh, a uh, what is an optimization with a certain constraint uh, what you need to do is that you have to form your bordered hessian determinant okay so when we have uh, an objective function of this nature so here we have n inputs and then we also have constraints function we can usually form our bordered hessian in this way so these are the second order cross partials this is the differential of the constraint function with respect to the variables the first order and our, our zero comes here so the f is what i've defined over here and uh, we can also form it this way as i told you but really i prefer using what we have over here now what happens is that if if we denote what you have over here as uh, the principal minus recall i told you the principal minus is that we try to look at all the 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 matrices in the middle right the matrices in the middle so the first principal minor is what we have over here and then it goes on to we have the n dimensional principal minor then the conditions for a maximum or a minimum is what we have over here all right i must say that uh, normally when you have a function of let's say four variables you know and you want to solve this question it takes a lot of time because uh, you know you have to do some mathematical calculations so in many cases you know when we have you know more than three variables you may want to use a, a software to do that but with three variables we can comfortably do that so what is the value addition the value addition is that the 
bolded Hessian determinant permits you to comfortably right, determine the maximum or the minimum of a function with any number of what? Variables. A more convenient way of doing that. And these are the conditions for a maximum and the conditions uh, for a minimum. Thank you very much. I have uh, an example here. Please try your hands on them. And uh, let's meet at the chat room and then discuss uh, how we were able to do this uh, example.